Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Car Wash Guys. Today we're going to talk about injector size selection. So as you can see behind me here, I have a Hydroflex injection system here at our test wash that we're working on. And there's a variety of injectors installed in the system. So when we're looking at injector size selection, we're not just talking about Hydroflex systems. We're talking about a Miser system. We're talking about a Sunny's and direct injection system. We're talking about uh, InBay Automatic. We're talking about Wash Worlds. We're talking about anywhere where you have to make a selection of the proper injector size. Two things come into play when we're talking about injector size selection. Number one is how much water product mixture total volume do I need out at my applicator to make the applicator work the way that it was intended. And number two is what dilution ratio do I need to make my chemical work the way it was intended. So let's start with the first one. How much volume of water and chemical mixed together do I need out at the applicator? This is going to come down to what applicator you're actually using and what nozzles are installed in that applicator. So if I were to look at something relatively small, like say a CTA applicator. Here, CTA applicators are going on with two gallons per minute. That two gallon per minute injector is supplying only four nozzles. Those four nozzles out in the bay are 0280 nozzles. So two gallon per minute nozzles. But remember, it doesn't need to take the two gallons per minute times four, because that's what's out there, that would be eight gallons per minute. We're talking about the right amount of volume of water and chemical. It's also going to get mixed with air. Also the pressure it's going out at matters. So you got to find that happy medium of the right amount of volume uh, versus the applicator that you're using. But in this case, for CTAs, two gallon a minute injector is working perfectly. In other cases, it might be a one gallon per minute injector. It's something that you have to kind of play around with and make sure that you're getting the dilution ratio that you want. If we look at the other side of the spectrum, a very large volume item, like say a Mr. Foamer Fominator 2 sheet applicator doing a lava function. That's going to require a lot of volume to fill out that entire manifold. In this case, we're running that with a 10 gallon per minute injector, taking 10 gallons a minute to fill out our lava flow. We also have at this site a Mr. Foamer Fominator 2 rain applicator that's applying the hot wax, or in this case, PolyShine Max. That's being done with eight gallons a minute. Not quite as much volume because we're not looking for a sheet, but still quite a bit of volume because we're looking to fill out an entire bar. The second side of this coin is dilution ratio. So for every product that you're using, there's a dilution ratio, the volume of chemical in comparison to water that it's being mixed with, that's going to make that chemical work the way it was intended. Your chemical supplier or chemical manufacturer should be able to provide you with the proper dilution ratios for the product to use in the application that they were intended. A product could have multiple dilution ratios. For instance, a product that is can be used as a drying agent or a sealer wax might have a different dilution ratio that it works at for just a drying agent versus using more product if it's a sealer wax. So make sure that you're using a dilution ratio uh, for the way that the product was intended to be used. Let's use drying agent here as our example of how dilution ratio is affected by the injector size. So at this wash location, we're using X55 2X as our drying agent. X55 2X is a concentrated product for which we want to use very small amounts per vehicle. It has to be very diluted. The dilution ratio on this product, if we checked our technical manual, would be somewhere between 1500 to 1 and 2000 to 1. That means a very small amount of product in quite a large volume of water. To figure out the proper injector size, we have to consult our chart. When you order metering tips, for injectors, you'll get the small screw and metering tips. You can get them from Hydroflex or from Dima. Um, you're going to get a chart like this one. This chart tells me that for a given injector size, with a given metering tip size, what that dilution ratio will be. 
Now let me warn you ahead of time. This is just a guide. This isn't going to tell you exactly what it's going to be because different products uh, are going to react differently to metering tip sizes. But for a guide, this is telling me that if I were to run my drying agent, X55 2X, on a two gallon per minute injector, that with a copper tip, which is an ultra lean, the smallest tip that you can put in, I'm gonna be at somewhere around 406 to one. So 400 to 1 is nowhere near the dilution ratio that I need to get to with this product. In order to get the proper dilution ratio, I have to have a bigger injector. I need more water. In order to get more water, we go up on our injector size. So at this location, we have a green injector. The green injector is 5.5 gallons per minute. If I consult my chart at 5.5 gallons per minute, and I look at the copper tip, I'm at 1,074 to 1. So a little over a thousand to one. Now I'm in the right ballpark. So you might be asking, if I said it's supposed to be 1500 to one to 2000 to one, why am I using a dilution ratio of 1074 to one? Well, like I said, different products are gonna react differently to metering tips. You really need to titrate out your chemicals to find out exactly what the dilution ratio is when it gets out to the bay. This is just a guide. Different products are going to suck into the injector at different rates because of the viscosity of the chemical. A heavier, thicker chemical is going to suck into the injector at a slower rate than a thinner, waterier chemical with the same tip. So in this case, we consult it as a guide, we use the proper injector size, but we still are verifying out in the bay that it's titrating out at the proper levels. And you can consult our video on titrations to see how we titrate chemicals and make sure that we have the proper dilution ratio. So now you can see the balancing game that's played with choosing an injector size when it comes to dilution ratio and volume going out to the bay. So what if I had an applicator out there that wasn't capable of taking five and a half gallons per minute from an injector? What if that was too much water? How would I know if that's too much water? There's a few different things that come into play here. Number one is what is the actual applicator? Is it a rain bar? Is it an arch? Is it a shower head? Is it a banana foamer? There's a lot of different options. There's all kinds of applicators. What is the applicator? So in this case, we for our drying agent here, we're using an arch. So that arch has a certain number of nozzles that go around it. First thing to check, are all the nozzles needed? Can certain nozzles be plugged? Are certain nozzles plugged that maybe shouldn't be plugged? But most importantly, what is the nozzle size? How many gallons per minute are those nozzles? And how much volume is it gonna to take to fill out those nozzles so that it actually sprays properly and gets to the vehicle the way it's supposed to? If those nozzles are too small and I put a five and a half gallon per minute injector on it, I won't, I won't be able to suck the product. It's gonna create back pressure in the line which is going to cause the injector to not suck properly. There's different ways to know that that's what's happening. Uh, one way is to play around with different injectors and see the rate at which they suck the chemical. Or you could have a tool like this from Hydroflex that goes into the line, the output line, and the gauge is going to tell you if you're in the right area for the, the amount of back pressure that's in the line. A certain amount of pressure is needed to make the injector suck, but too much pressure in the line is gonna cause the injector to not suck properly. So you gotta find the happy medium. So in this case, if I had a rain bar out there, say a single hole rain bar that could only take two gallons per minute, and I couldn't put a five and a half gallon per minute injector on there, I wouldn't be able to get a low enough dilution ratio to make this product that I'm using work. I would have too much product mixing with the volume of water that I have. In that case, I have to go down to a different product. Maybe I'm using a non-concentrated version or maybe I'm double tipping. There's ways that you can put uh, an extra tip in the line to bring down the volume of chemical actually making it to the injector. So those are all things that you have to look at. There are also different types of injectors. For instance, here you can see that there's a dual barb injector being used. This is mixing two products into the water. In this case, we're mixing our, our wrap foamer with a low pH boost 
to provide a higher level of acid to make sure that we get the pH of the vehicle low enough to promote drying and shine on the vehicle. When you get to when you get to dual injectors, they come in all the different sizes just like the single injector nozzles do. So for instance, here is a blue 2.25 gallon per minute. This is a gray 2 gallon per minute injector in the dual barn. When you get all these different types of injectors, it can be expensive to have a whole variety available to you to play with. So it's good to have an idea starting off of what injector sizes you need, what applications they're going to be providing, are any of them going to be need to be a dual port injectors, are any of them going to need to be high flow injectors, such as these BAM injectors from Hydroflux. Carrying a large volume of injectors can be expensive. It's best to rely on your chemical provider to provide you with the right injectors so that you don't have to keep all these injectors on hand. Um, once the injector is installed and it's working properly, you probably won't need to change it unless you're changing something out in the tunnel, swapping a product, something along those lines. But it's nice to have some spare injectors, especially for ones that are already installed because injectors do go bad and you might need to swap them out from time to time. So just to recap, two things that are important when we're looking at injector size. How much flow do we need to fill the applicator that's out in the bay? We have to have the right amount of volume to make that applicator out in the bay work the way it was intended. The second variable is the dilution ratio for the chemical that I'm trying to use. I have to consult my technical manuals, make sure that I'm using the chemical the way the manufacturer intended so that it works properly. I hope you found this explanation of injector size selection useful. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check out our other videos that relate to chemical as far as titrations, volumetrics, figuring out your cost per car, all important things when it comes to getting your chemical locked down the right way. Thank you.